Welcome, survivors. Have you ever wanted to create and customize your own mods but don't know how? Never worry again, my friends. May I present a graphical user interface capable of automatically generating mods suited to your personal play experience in just three easy steps. Simply pick what mods you want, choose the mod options, picking your own values, and click. It's that easy. And the best part? You never need to look at any XMLs or scary wall of text. Welcome to Alpha 21, survivors. As you all get geared up to commence your journey into the newest update, I thought it would be fantastic to release to you all an automated, highly customizable mod generation GUI that is compatible with Alpha 21. Link for the download is in the video description. Within this video, I will be covering how to set it up and use the interface to create your own mods. We'll end the video with some future plans for the mod generator. So stay till the end if you want to know the direction it is headed, and of course, feel free to leave your own ideas and wish lists that you'd like to see in future releases. First step is to navigate over to the download link and download the zip file. Unzip and extract the folder to your desired location in your computer. This next step is very important. Go inside the folder and at the top should be a folder named 7 days directory. It should be the first folder on top. Open the text file within and overwrite that directory with your own 7 days mods folder file path. What this does is it will place the generated mods directly in that folder. However, if you wish to generate files into a different folder and manually drag them over to the mods folder as you will, you can do that too. Basically put the directory you want the generated mod files to be written. After that, setup is complete. Now look inside this folder called 7 days to die mod gen gui.exe. I'll have Taco Bear do some editing wizardry here to show you what that all looks like. If you have trouble finding it, just type .exe in the search box and it should pop up. I would recommend pinning it to your taskbar or making a shortcut so you can access it easier. And in any case, open that up and it will launch the GUI. Upon opening, it will take you to the home page, which currently has two clickable links. The first leading to this video and the second to our Patreon page, which will be where general GUI announcements are made in between major updates, which themselves will involve future videos. And if you haven't already, we have some bases exported as POIs available as downloads there, so if you haven't grabbed them already, go do so. The left side of the GUI is the navigation panel, which will take you to the different mod categories. For now, this includes zombies, defenses, vehicles, items, player, and we'll get to the bottom two at a later point in the video. Clicking on the zombies page will take you to the mod catered to our brain munching friends. There are three steps to configuring your mod. Step one, select the mods you want to generate by clicking on the checkbox. You can select one one or all of them as it will generate all simultaneously. I would like to emphasize that the mods need to be selected in this step. If you configure a mod in step two that is not checked in step one, the mod won't generate. So make sure you click on that checkbox. For this demo, let us click on all three. Step two, you'll see three tabs in this widget that correlate to the three mod options on the left side. Let's start with melee range. The melee range mod adjusts the melee attack range of your typical everyday zombie and the cop variant. Next to each option is a clickable slider that once activated will enable editing of the box below. Clicking on the drop down arrow will open some predefined values to set, but if you do not like any of those, simply type in the value of your choice. If for whatever reason we do not want to adjust the cop melee range and are satisfied with the game's default, then do not click on the slider. You'll notice that you cannot edit the entry if the slider is not activated. In this way, we can pick and choose what options within a mod to select. Let's go on to the next tab. This mod allows you to change the number of ambient zombies out in the world's various biomes. Again, you will see sliders for all biomes, pine forest, burnt forest, desert wasteland, and snow. If we click on the pine forest slider, this will activate the settings for this biome. Max count is all the number of zombie group entities to spawn in a given chunk. By default, it is one, so the predefined value is twice that, and is so for all the biomes here. Max count night affects the number of night zombie entity group. Time all and time night specifies when these entities can spawn. By default, that would be day and night respectively, or you could put in any for both day and night. And lastly, the respawn values are the time in game days in which the groups will respawn after being killed. So to increase the difficulty, you can obviously increase the number and or decrease the respawn time. Each of these values can also be manually typed in so you are not forced to a flat two times or four times increase across the board. And you are not forced to have that same level of increase across all biomes. We can edit each biome separately by activating the slider, or if we want to just leave it at default, we can simply leave the slider deactivated. For this demo, let's change the default behavior for the pine forest and desert biomes. Our last current available zombie mod is the loot drops. We can increase 
increase or decrease the drop probability of loot bags upon death and increase or decrease the time for the bags to despawn. Despawn time is expressed in real life seconds. So let us increase the drop probability and leave the despawn time to default. Once we are satisfied with our selections, click on generate mods. If we head over to our folder, we can see a mods folder for each of the mods we generated. If we check the increase the zombie biome mod we, and open the XML, we can see the biomes we picked, forest and desert, as well as the values we specified. You'll notice that the other biomes are not included in the mod, so they'll retain their default behavior. Next up is the defenses tab. For the initial batch of mods in this category, I decided to go with some of the more underwhelming fragile defenses in the game, namely spikes and blade traps. If a zombie farts in their general direction, they will get destroyed. So how about we make them a bit more sturdy? Again, click the checkboxes, go over to the middle panel, and under the spikes tab, you'll see we can separately configure wood and iron spikes. We can set the hit points and damage for each, so let's activate both and increase their hit points and damage. Over on the blade traps tab, we can see several options. Hit points and damage are obvious. Repair items sets the amount of resources required to repair. So I think by default, it takes 10 forged steel to repair a blade trap. This setting will change that requirement. So you can increase or decrease the amount of forged steel required to repair. Break percentage is the percentage of hit points in which the blade trap starts smoking and wobbling, and the broken percentage is the percentage of hit points in which the blade traps just stopped working before being destroyed. Make sure when setting this that the break percentage is higher than the broken percentage. In the future, I'll probably disallow entering a broken percentage higher than the break one, but for now, just be aware of that. A last minute addition, actually while Taco Bear was editing this video, was the inclusion of the generator bank. It may ultimately be moved to a new section in the future, but for now, it will live in the defenses category. After all, we gotta power the defenses with something, right? So what can this bad boy do now? We can adjust the amount of fuel it can hold, so increase it from 1,000 gas to whatever we like. And we can also include the power we get per engine. By default, that is 50, but we can bump that up a notch. So how about 200 per engine would give us 1,200 total watts if all the engine slots are filled. Now that's better. And as before, click on generate mods and it will create our mods we selected. Only the mods selected on this page will be created. It does not also create the zombie mods we configured previously. Each page will generate its own mods. For vehicles, there are currently two options. The first is the ability to adjust the velocity and minimax torques, basically how fast you can go and how easy it is to drive up a steep hill. So we can adjust on an individual vehicle basis. So let's adjust the motorcycle and gyro. The velocity needs to be entered as a comma separated value, which I believe is the lower and upper range of velocity. The gyro has no torque option, so let's bump up the velocity a bunch so we can really zip through the air. The second mod option tweaks the fuel tank size so our vehicles can hold more fuel and adjust the brightness of the headlights. Naturally, the bicycle is removed from the configurable options, but adjusting these values for the other vehicles will allow you to fill your tanks higher while also increasing the brightness of your vehicle's headlights. Once done, generate the mods and they appear in our folder. If we open it, we can see only the vehicles we selected have been modded. Clicking on the items category on the left takes us to the items mod page and for now we just have one mod which increases the stack size of items in your inventory so let's bump that up to 20,000 and generate bam and lastly we have the player mod which again only has one for now we can increase the amount of skill points we receive per level so if you want an easier time or you increase the difficulty of the game so drastically that you need extra skill points to keep up why not give yourself say three skill points each time you level up that's pretty nice one last thing you can switch between a light dark or system mode to visualize the GUI up until now, we've been in dark mode, so if I go to the bottom left and switch it to light, the GUI is now brighter. Selecting system will match your system settings, which in my case is also dark, so easier on the eyes. So what does the future hold? Well, as I alluded to before, the bottom two categories, loot and trade, will be for various mods I will create for Alpha 21, dealing with the new learning by reading mechanics and the trader stage system. No timeline yet as to when these will be released, but I am diving into those right away. I'll also be continuing to make additional mods for the existing categories, prioritizing new Alpha 21 features, like the amount of damage when hitting something in your vehicle or the amount of damage you dish out. I'll also be continuing to make additional mods for the existing categories, prioritizing new Alpha 21 features, like the amount of damage taken when hitting something in your vehicle or the amount of damage you dish out when hitting a zombie. The amount of hit points a repair kit can repair on your vehicle as well. Things like that. For loot, I am thinking about making a mod to adjust the drop probabilities of the new magazines for those that want an easier or harder experience. And in more general quality of life changes, I would like to add descriptions of the mods and, and values. Again, the intention of this mod generator GUI is to provide you all with the ability to customize your experience specifically to your tastes, not by the tastes of the mod creator. In essence, you are now the creators of your own mods, so go forth and generate. If you have any questions about how to set up or use the GUI, let me know in the comments below. Feel free to make suggestions for future mods, capabilities, features, you name it, and I'll make note of all those ideas. Thanks
thanks for watching everyone. Please consider liking and subscribing if you have enjoyed the video. And a special thanks to our Patreons whose support makes all this work possible. And see you all in Alpha 21.